right, we heard you make some noise. It sounds like you are ready for game number three. I am too. Remember, there are only five rounds of Fortnite here today. So this will officially solidify the halfway mark. To start things off though, we have to begin here at the Frenzy Farms. Cami, Seti versus Data and Stain. We've seen this go either way. We know that Kylix is nearby as well. Kyrie here, so you gotta be careful. Meanwhile, Kit gets the weapon first. He's looking for the tag and they're doing a great job. They actually have the left and right here. Find just a little bit of time here. Seti also, a couple of weapons at his disposal. Tactical DMR, Infiltrator Pump as well. Stain trying to do his best to pressure the bottom of this barn. It's going to be Stain actually eliminated first. A nice tag team appearance there from Cami to get the backup necessary. And that's going to be Stain and Datas eliminated yet again so early on MDF. And we're already in game three. Yeah, this time extremely quick. They secure the eliminations here. Meanwhile, seven men in Cal Gamer versus King potentially unfolding here. I do know Kanata is battling as well. It seems like he was taken down and eliminated by a different duo. So we are already seeing a very huge miss up. Meanwhile, King, he will show you why he is one of the best. Let's not forget what Cal Gamer had to say. He said himself that he does not believe King has what it takes. He thinks King is a bit overrated, but I beg to differ. We have seen what he can do in person. We have seen what he can do in just clean head-to-heads in a box fight type environment. He's incredible. It's literally what King established his name on was his promise when it comes to box fight match opportunities. And here again, King looking for his chance to take down Calgamer. Calgamer actually gonna look for a brief retreat here though at the Relentless Retreat. I like it. Seems as though he wants to try and look for some better weaponry or possibly even just looking for a different position altogether. Yeah, upgrade will be important and, and massive there, especially since he's running out of material there. The shock of meanwhile, Zagu, Peppo, they had the knock, but they didn't get the finish. That's gonna be a big mess up. Big mistake, big opportunity lost, but Zagu finds another tag here. Meanwhile, looking for the big opener. Another one there, okay, chipping away, but nothing significant this time. That is massive, though, for Skits and Sora. That Skits was actually able to find that revive in the heat of it all. Is now Peppa, Zagu. A few Shieldbreaker EMPs. Curious to see what Zagu actually chooses to do with these. He's gonna opt to try and maybe apply some more pressure onto Skits and Sora with them, or if he's just gonna hold them for the time being. But Skits, now fully aware of the fact that Zagu is trying to break down his wall. Continuing to replace build after build. Skits with the peak. Zagu with the damage taken. And it's going to be Skits and Sora still looking to try and capitalize on this circumstance. Now be careful though, backing themselves up into an indestructible corner. And you can hear the crowd really starting to turn up right now. Big augment though, that was just picked up. That rarity check could go crazy. Depending on how, I believe it was Skids that might have opted for it. Saw him, one of those common weapons. Zagu, back to full shield though, but did have to expand both of those big pots. And this battle's taken quite some time. Business turret <laughs> quickly uh, taken out. And Zagu tried to place there, his pressure on Skids. Oh, I think he's gonna be feeling really confident after that one, but. Zagu now completely out of material here. He does have to be careful. His teammate finds a little bit too, so Peppa goes in, fully boxes up. It's all gonna come down to hitting the shots, and he does. Zagu showing us why he is one of the best. Coming directly out of the region of Asia, representing all the way for J Japan, and my oh my. Take a look now with Kylie and Fastroki. Man, they're just mixing things up. A constant trades for the most part, but for Strokey and Kylie here at Stevie Springs, south side of the map seems to be working out relatively well for them so far, having that elimination already. And now that's going to alleviate a decent amount of pressure here for Strokey and Kylie. They don't necessarily need to fully push in just yet. They can really wait to see how they want to actually choose to try and reapproach here, but. They're not the only team to mix things up a bit as now Misha and Tini, just above Bryce and Chubbs. 
and they might be looking for an opportunity to find an Elim or two here. This is pretty interesting because Tina and Misha definitely have been having a tough time against uh, Baka and Pars, but Bryce and Chubbs have been jumping in that battle as well. It has been a three-way engagement here at the Shady Stilton around. So Tini and Misha trying to mix it up, saying, all right, what can we do different? How can we adapt here? Clearly, they made it to the upper bracket, right? But having a tough time so far, might be looking like a Saturday appearance if they can't turn up and turn up soon. Meanwhile, Miro might be stuck in an engagement up against Shari is, well, a forced retreat, actually. Cooper, very accurate. Some of those twin mag shots. Miro leading the charge up against this solo. And it seems like it's only a matter of seconds before Shari is completely collapsed upon, doing everything in his power to try and stay alive just one moment longer to see if there's somewhere that he can build off to to actually scurry away and escape. But Cooper and Miro, they are relentless. They refuse to let this opportunity go. And it's going to be another four points by the way of Elam as they finally close out on Shari. You got to respect that right there. Cooper all the way with the initial opener and then the call out, setting up Miro for successes. He said, hey, look, they're, they're one. Trust me, Miro with no hesitation jumps directly in there. Things are looking pretty good, though, so far for Threats and Buda over at Sanguine Suites. It does seem as though they managed to get their way into the vault. That kind of Stinger SMG certainly going to come play a pretty big part there for Threats whenever they do decide to engage. And a few more battles later on. Clownski and Grolls, though, a team that we really saw in quite the position last game. It was really their surge strategy that seemed to be a little bit lacking in game number two. So now the mentality here for Grolls and Clownski, if they want to find some points, want to work their way up even further on that leaderboard, just try and cement themselves into that top 25. But they've got to work through some other teams before they can find themselves there. Yeah, and work through those crash pads as well. Having them work against them for a second there, so Clownski couldn't unfortunately join Grolls on the push to the top, so cost them a fair bit there, but all in all, they have things under control. A good height positioning, at least. That can definitely help a lot as far as establishing some surge damage is concerned. Meanwhile, inside of Rumble Ruins, we have Rub Up, come on, Axe Force. Hiding inside of a bush, and a pretty common strategy as well for players to look for those tag opportunities with some of that safety inside of the bush. Yeah, now that single Elim right there is onto Cooper. I know we're just hyping up Miro and Cooper's big eliminations they picked up, but look, Miro's now by himself in the distance there, so Cooper caught off guard out in the open there and away from his teammate. Here we get to see Heroics Thomas and Malabuka. They are up, they are standing, which means they have survived the drop clearly. And they are working their way towards the grand finals here and now. Massive stuff though from Alabuka and Thomas, given that they had to sit out for game number two because of Kanata and Ager. Right. So for them to be able to play makeup time now, just adding to their total point count for the day. Because again, we are in game three of five. So this is, I think, technicality of a halfway mark for a lot of these teams. And this is where you can really start to see the consistency that needs to be maintained come into play. Yeah, one might say this is the most important game of the tournament here. Between game one and game three, I mean, either you set yourself up for success or you turn things around now and come out a victor. And by that, I just mean top 25, right? That is the goal today. And then, of course, Sunday, Get as high as possible, make as much money, <laughs> and beat the winner of that $1 million first place prize. Here we got Pink and Vico. I know we were hyping them up. Definitely a team that has had a, a, a lot of success. Although, again, playing off the scrappy drop, but look, they find themselves finally fighting a quarter cold. Uh, true, but they had Cal Gamer and Seven Man also on the opposite end of them. It seemed as though they were kind of sandwiched yeah. in that position. So, might be. Very tough circumstance for them to actually work around and 
as well. Here in the heart of Mega City, you got Flixie way up top on the building. Grippe seems as though they had a successful battle because Flixie with one elimination looked as if he just got the opportunity to revive Grippe there as well. But now from this aerial point of view, opportunities to use these grind rails if necessary for a quicker rotation, but Mega City seems to be relatively safe for the time being. And it, the way Flixie keeps looking down leads me to believe that he's got some form of idea that Suns and Anon are the team directly below him. Just outside of the Mega City, King and Phaser Cam here. Very interesting. They've had a very long track for the Relentless Retreat till here. No Elims just yet, but this is a perfect time to go ahead and catch up 11. So let's hear the word. Thank you, Mo. So like you see, no Elims. We obviously saw at the start of the day, Cal Gamer had a lot to say about Phaser and King's ability. He thought he weren't too good. And King said the same. He thinks they're not as good as they say they are. But these two teams have been going head to head. Not full engagement, but still both teams looking to try and set up for fights where possible. We see them sort of pinching and peeking towards each other at times. And what's happening is that they're both disengaging, right? Neither team currently sit in that top 25. So one of these two teams is going to have to start to step it up if either of them are going to be making out of Relentless Retreat and making that vote useful. Thanks so much, Levin, for that breakdown on whether or not it's going to be Cal Gamer 7 Man or King and Phaser. That's going to be the team that finally breaks through from that initial drop spot engagement. But again, it, with teams just actively choosing to disengage, have to believe that part of that reason is because they don't want to risk being early eliminated in match three. Acorn cold though. They've got some eliminations on the mind because they want Pink and Vico if they can find it. Cold now applying some pressure onto the backside here. Pink and Vico certain to have to keep an eye out for it. Cold though, just continuing to move around some of these top tier builds. An acorn, cold. Slight lull in the action. As they try to make sure that their approach is as methodical as possible here at Frenzy Fields. Yeah, and of this duo here, the highlight player was definitely Acorn in match number two, where he really went the distance in the end when it mattered, but. I'm sure if he can do it one more time, it should be all but solidified inside that top 25. This has been a, a great showing so far. And again, contested. Half the loot he would expect, half of what he would really want. So to take out Pink and Vico, to send them back to the lobby, to not see them on Sunday would be excellent. They could make a run as grand champions. But what's interesting is that at Frenzy, keep in mind, Calgamer and Seven Man were there as well, but they yeah. weren't when we last checked in just now. So have to imagine that Calgamer, Seven Man recognizing, hey, this just isn't the type of engagement we want to take right now, just like I drop as a solo, trying to see if he can gather anything from Rift Island. If he's able to get this capture point uncontested as a solo, that will be absolutely incredible. Yeah, and you know, it's worth 15 points, so it's definitely the position you want to jockey for. Not a single other team has decided that they want to come up here. This could be his lucky, graceful moment here, but no, there is a duo just above them. Could Eyedrop build a big enough base here to buy him some of a flex, potentially? Oh no, it seems like the team's actually underneath. Okay, but we jump in with Queezy. Queezy's hurt here. Vino, pretty healthy. They have to double down alongside one another. It's Kylie and Pastroki. Kylie and Frestroki went south this game, had success down there, and now, because of that, inevitably, it puts them on the pathway, the war path of Vino and Queezy. That was a big shot, though, that Kylie just landed onto Vino, took down his shield almost entirely, so Vino's gonna have to pause for a moment, utilize one of those legendary slurp juices to make sure that he is at ample HP to actually take this engagement. It's Kylie now looking for where he wants to try and make this finalized approach, but doesn't realize Venno's managed to sneak up behind him. And Venno making sure to return the favor of damage done. Queasy as well, starting to create a little bit of a separation here, starting to see whether or not he could try and pressure on the other side of these builds from Venno. It's a nice pressure application from this duo. All they've got to do now is finish it. You know, making Monaco very proud here so far for the upper bracket. This fight. Now approaching that time where you start to think, uh, 
How worth it is it? Can we get out of here safe and sound? Is there an exit plan for us? You have to assume they're feeling the same way. Yup, the demeanor says so, and we call it just right. They want to get out of there as much as we want to see them rotate. So <laughs> on they go. Meanwhile, the same can't be said about Pink and Vico. I'm sure they're thinking, okay, what's the game plan here? Acorn and Code know better, but at the same time, Acorn and Code are in such a better position. It's in their best interest to actually stay here, hold them out. And not this, only that. the team they want to take out. Exactly. Plus, Pink, we saw his bills just now in comparison to Cold. It is a night and day difference. I mean, Cold with 90 bills to still work through. Meanwhile, Pink, I believe last checked in, he had around like 16, 18. That's practically nothing. They've invested so much time here now that they don't really have another option other than to close this fight out because they need the material. They need the refresh off of Cold and Acorn. Acorn. Cold, but Cold gets him in the box and puts down the other as well. Pink and Vico shut down and sent back to the lobby. And that is the best team for them to eliminate. They already have pretty much top 25 now. Sealed in the bag. They are in third place coming into this, picking up these Elims here. It was so good to kind of run it back one more time. Boxes him up, finishes him off. This is how excellent Cold is in the pocket. Well played just did not seem as though Pink and Vico are ready to tackle Cold from that position. But being towards that frenzy field side, they're going to have a great opportunity now for Acorn and Cold to make an approach towards the zone from the dead side rotation. So curious to see how that actually pans out for them later on. But as for Ryze and Iamzo, solid as ever in they're terms of applying damage. They're also the only team that finished top five in every major of the three majors. That is an exceptional position to put yourself in, really showing how flexible they are season to season. It also shows you they might just be the team this weekend. They might just be that team, but let's jump into the action here. Malabuka hurt, three HP, forced down, and the pressure unrelentless. Coming in from the Middle Eastern team, Rapid here, really pushing back. They've already claimed Thomas. And Malabuka wants nothing of that. The ME boy says, hey, listen, you're up. Sit down. We got this. Absolutely insane, though, just how quickly Malabuka was able to escape from that position because it really looked as if Kiwini and Rapid were about to finish off this duo. But with Thomas being out of the picture, Malabuka, granted, we know that he's capable of making those solo clutch circumstances happen, but with so many power hitters left in this lobby as a team, that solo spot is not looking the best. Danyat Karmi, absolutely scary, scary duo right here. Some of EU's greatest. Very hardworking duo here. Takes the Teeny. Teeny and Misha just haven't caught a break here. Rotating all the way down from the north side. Coming up short here now. Fragmented apart. Misha is looking to replenish himself here, but the Storm Surge is active. And Banyak just says, hey, you know what? I want nothing to do with this. It's already looking pretty tough. I'm going to just go ahead and rotate on out of here. They're going to crash pad their way across, and that should be all she wrote. And nice, fair. effective rotate. It's, it's a lot of map to cover, though, for some of those north side teams. With the way that things have been breaking down, but... Still, Maniac and Carmi, again, doing a great job utilizing those crash pads. It's Cami and Seti, together as a duo, that's something that we haven't really seen too much of at this point in the game. Curious to see how their end game goes now that they're both up and running. They're checking bushes, they're looking around, they're trying to see who is lingering about. They already have themselves their third elimination. And they're sitting on top of the loot. So this is a full-on refresh for someone who was up on high ground here. So this is an excellent find for them. Meanwhile, looking at the top five here, Ritual and Re are leading the charge by a fair margin. The only team on their heels now, Cold and Acorn, as Garrus and Shari have been sent back to the lobby. But again, if you take a win right now, I mean, you have just about done enough. It'd be hard-pressed for you not to get out of the upper bracket and go straight to finals with a victory. Yeah, we're definitely starting to see a, a pretty big point disparity yeah. from our top 10 to even our top 20 competitors. Grip and Flixie, though, one more time. Another revive. It's going to have to go through, but this time it's going to be Grip A turning the favor onto his teammate Flixie. 
But that med missed as well. Seems Flixy is going to be just fine for the time being, but they've still got to keep pushing forward. They still got to keep trying to move in, try and stay ahead of these zones wherever possible. But two revives into the match already, Monster. You can tell that they're definitely having some tough times with making these rotations. And I know we're jumping in with Monaco's Mustache and Falcon Tayson here, but I want to give a lot of credit to Baka and Pars who have a great position over the lobby right now. Bird's eye view, they are one of the few teams poised up for potential high ground, and they have just continued to show us what they are made of. They are now officially slipped their way into top five, really working their way up. But hold up, Tayson's got a lot of problems knocking on his door. Ping! has gotten knocked <laughs> in the mix there. So while he was focused on Taysen, other teams started to look inwards and I'm not sure Taysen understands that there was a down body there. Or maybe he did and might be interested in trying to pursue it. He's thinking about it. Kyrie, hoping he can get there his it is. in time, but it's gonna be too much from Taysen. Interruption on that revive now. It's Taysen and Mustache seeing if they can finish what somebody else had started. They managed to get the material refresh, the item refresh as well if they want it. There for the taking, and Taysen will swap out for that double legendary slurp juices. But Mustache and Taysen still powering through some of these builds that have already been pre-established here, and that's just a freebie for them. Yeah, it's, it's all in all a net positive. You get the damage that you need. You start inching your way towards this end game. Then looks like it is going to be a sloppy shores finish here. It's going just outside the mountain there. Vino's already marked up the position they want to be in. It's that natural high ground on the backside here, the ice capsule. But again, Baka Par is looking downwards on them, putting that infinite upwards pressure here, not making it look easy at all here. He's going to have to concede for a bit. It's cost him a lot. He's going to have to take some of Vino's inventory as well. So Vino trusting and Queezy to lead the rotate here. It's all about that middle, though, at this point for Queezy, especially when you know that you're having some pressure being applied to you from the high ground. The more durable your builds, the better. As far as understanding, though, which way he wants to tarp Queezy, recognizing the fact that he's got his chance right now to just keep building up. And again, with it being metal, it's so difficult for teams to really take a second to try and chop them out just yet. Queasy got to look for the connect onto some of these other builds, but dropping down ever so slightly, still maintaining the height overall, though. And that's what I do best. Limited builds to just get there, connects it to a structure in the distance, but Kami and Seti are looking backwards and they're saying, no, not today, not in this lobby. I want to fight for it as well. We need a big game here. We need it now. And all of a sudden now, they are the most resistance on the front side of the zone here. But if they don't put pressure back, we know what's gonna happen. Vino, Queezy will run with this. Seti and Kami aren't careful. Keep in mind where their builds were starting to go towards. I mean, with the direction that Queezy's headed at least, it almost seems as though they might headbutt each other on the high ground at the moment here. But is that Acorn? It's sneaky with the crash pad. But he's continuing to hang around. He wants that front side of the zone, but hanging just on the edge of it. And I just love how we're seeing, again, NA's best and EU's best, right? Back to back here, two different perspectives, two totally different layers. Acorn and Cold, again, just excellent low ground teams playing to what they play best, and they're doing it well here. Meanwhile, you do, of course, have your other teams fighting for height, so an excellent play to watch unfold here. But we jump into Pars, and the end game for Pars here, too, no Baka. The least amount of elims we've seen so far, but it is a single one. So, so far, of the three, they put up numbers every time. Now we jump in with Muzz and Paper. Turning on mine right now. Six eliminations. Could this be their game? One big pop-up will put you up in that top 25, surely. It's been a relatively quiet day for Muzz and Paper so far. So this could be a massive moment if they're able to seize it. Sitting on the low ground, though. Acorn and Cold. They can tell there's players trying to make their way around the edges next to them. Two crash pads remain here at Acorn's disposal. Cold following closely behind. Cami and Seti, though, they seem to be making an idea all their own. Oh, this is crazy. From the backside here, they find the tags, and Vino's hurt. And this might be the new high ground. Cami, Seti coming in out of nowhere, and they swing things around. Queezy's hurt. Vino's fully healthy, but no! Things change so quickly. Acorn and Cold finish him. And now Queezy's by himself, but it's still excellent endgame for them. They're going to be happy with a top 10. Meanwhile, Paper and Muzz continue 
to force their way in here. Eight Elims now, probably the most that are alive at the moment. Trailing behind another team and Paper's gonna fall there. And unfortunately, Muzz to follow suit, but Merstache still up and kicking. Seti though with a massive hit, and that's the back to backs now. Antor Robop with the materials refresh. It might not do him any good. He's not able to break into the zone in time. Acorn instead will be here to play cutoff as now Merstache forced underneath it all. Lark picks as well, living as a solo. This is looking like Acorn and Cold's game for the taking. And, and Acorn's doing an excellent job, pressuring with the breach of shotgun, making sure no one's got a chance to breathe, but Larpex is still going. He's found two. That's 11 eliminations for Larpex of the low. But NA takes the game, Acorn and Cold, the shrug. He's making it look like it was it, it, exactly his plan. It's just too easy. <laughs>